Welcome back, everybody. We love our Battleborn lithium batteries. I tell you, it's been amazing. But the biggest problem is we have no clue what the state of charge is. Hi, I'm Scott Field, and this is the continuation do-it-yourself video of the electrical system. Before we uh, replaced the AGM batteries with the Battleborn Lithium, and that's been going great. Today, we're going to go with replace or installing a BMK, which is a battery monitoring kit, Magnum, so that I can monitor the lithium batteries, and we're also going to install on off switches so I can completely shut off the coach believe it or not this motor coach does not come with battery switch offs for the house batteries only for the the engine batteries which is kind of crazy so to get this job done I've called in some expert help from my good friend Chris, Chris Clark of Runaway with the Clark what's up big guy <laughs> Thank you so much for Absolutely. being here. Cause uh, what our ears do? Lord knows <laughs> I need as much help as possible. Hey, well, so to start this all, Chris, Chris and I drew a schematic of how to how we're going to install the BMK and shunts on my coach. I have two separate systems, so I had to have two BMKs and two shunts. But Chris, when we did this, looking at that. And when you looked at our uh, our system in there, you noticed we did not have a shutoff valve Correct. or shutoff switches for mm -hmm. the coach at all. Which is a critical comp component in my my guess. I, I mean, every installer that puts them in, the first thing they do before they put the coach batteries in, they have a, a battery disconnect. Knowing we didn't have those, now we got to completely disconnect everything to even get started because there is no way to disconnect anything. However, we were going to do that anyway because we got to get on top of the battery trays. So to do that, uh, we drew this up. The, the shunts are going to go to the left, the BMKs to the right, tag right into the batteries. The shunts, the wires, the current wires that we have, we're just going to cut those once we get the shunts installed and then crimp on some terminals, shrink tubes, some insulation on them and uh, should be quick down and dirty. The challenge is gonna be on the inverter uh, ground wires because we can't get them out to crimp them. We've only got a hammer crimper, not a hand crimper. So what we're gonna do, we've got a bunch of tools over here in the table. Off. Here is what we're gonna be using to do the install of the switches and the BMK and shunt. Here are the two switches we bought. They're the single ser a series battery, single, so that we can on off with the key. I like the one with the key. Hole saw to draw, drill the hole in the back. We need a foot pound torque wrench and we need an inch pound torque wrench for the wiring. Uh, we need terminal ends. We need three aught, three eighth inch terminal ends for the major battery connect, uh, lines. Uh, we've got the crimper, hammer for the crimper, all the necessary drills and wrenches. Uh, we need the heat gun to for the shrink wrap. We've got the telephone cable for the communication to the BMK to the uh, inverter. Here's our shunt. Here's our BMK. And we have all the necessary lines with the necessary fuses. We've got the major wire cutter and we've got miscellaneous pliers and wire cutters. I get it, it is a lot of stuff, it's intimidating, uh, but luckily I got my man Chris here with me and uh, I think we're gonna get it done. So let's get started. Okay. Just to remind you, we are not professionals. I'm not an electrician, I'm not an electrical engineer, but we are gonna try and be as safe as possible. I'm gonna go in and switch all the switches off turn the uh, breaker off for the generator and turn the uh, 
uh, switch off for the uh, engine batteries. We've already taken all our jewelry off and we don't wear belts, so we're trying to be as safe as possible. So, okay, BMK shunt are the most important part. We're going to work on those first. We're going to take all the wires off. I know, I just installed them. We're going to take all the wires off, take the top row of batteries out, put a pad on the tray so nothing can hit it and we can't, we'll have a problem with a, a possible electrical hazard. No, no tools dropping on top of it causing any kind of arcing and safety precautions. So. Right, and then we'll work on installing the shunt and uh, the BMK. Batteries are out. We're getting ready to mark and install the shunt and the BMK up against the back panel. We've got enough room for both shunts and both BMKs. So we're going to do that now. Right. We were going to install the shunt and the BMK on the back wall. We took video of that, but the metal is too thin. Screws will not hold to it. So we're out in the middle of nowhere and we have to use our ingenuity. We are going to screw the BMK and the shunt to this backer and we've got another one of these behind the wall so we're going to mount all these here and then screw this through the metal wall into the backer behind the metal wall to make it good and firm. Now we're going to take the bolts out of the shunt so that we can make sure and verify which I'm sure we should have done before we put that in there. But <laughs> We're going to verify that we've got the right uh, terminals and then uh, we're going to measure the wire, cut the wire, install the terminals, crimp them, install them on the shunt and over to the battery and uh, then we'll install the wiring for each BMK. Okay, we have cut the first main negative trunk between the batteries and the inverter. We cut it, we're getting ready to trim back the insulation and we're going to install the terminals. And these terminals will go on each side of the shunt. This one goes all the way back to the inverter. This one is currently goes to the battery, but it's going to go on each end of that shunt. Basically what so the, the shunt, shunt does, can... steps down the current down to 50 millivolts. Uh, five. This one's a 500 amp shunt maximum, and it um, it gauges the the power flowing through it, if you will, so it can read it from the ammeter inside. The ammeter can only take up to a 50 millivolt uh, voltage, so that's how that shunt's read through that. That's what those two little small wires that we're going to hook up in a moment to the BMK. Plug it into the BMK and it's going to signal through a telephone cord back to your inverter and back up to the control panel. We have the shunt installed, tightened and torqued. We have the BMK installed, wired. We are now getting ready to install the negative ground for the BMKs and the positive wire with the two amp fuse in it for both BMKs so that they'll be hot wired. I'm down here in the basement got both inverters here we are about ready to run the telephone line everything else is hooked up so we've got to have a, a telephone line communication it goes from the BMK uh, battery monitor up that we just installed all the way back and plug into the green portion the green input here on both inverters so once we do that, they'll be able to communicate to each other and then it will also communicate up to the remote. It's what we like to call plug and play. DMKs are done. They are installed. Okay. What we're going to do now is we're going to install uh, the switches. I want two main switches that I can turn off on either battery bank and do anything I want in the coach and not have to worry about any power. We are going to drill two holes, one at the top, one towards the bottom, and uh, we'll run the reds all the way over to it, each side, and hook them up with new terminals and rock and roll. 
Switches are in. BMKs are done. Bottom bank of batteries are all hooked up. We are getting ready to reinstall the top bank and hook them back up and turn the switches on and get everything fired back up again. So this is exactly what we wanted. Battery sock, it's thinking. Like the manual said, yep. we want to make sure we charge the batteries to 100% so it'll register and it gets its first reading and then we discharge it. So what we need to do now is, since we've got two different legs, check each one of the legs. We've got the power turned on. Let's make sure the refrigerator is working off inversion and let's make sure some of the outlets and lights and stuff are on and see if we can pull some, some uh, draw on the circuit. It has been approximately 24 hours since we installed the BMK and the shunt and the new switches. So Chris, what went well? Everything. We got done before dark. <laughs> yes, that is a great thing. We got done before the sun went down. I thought that was awesome. And uh, we had all the proper tools. Yes, we, we had did. all the proper components. We didn't have to go get anything. Go, no more shopping. No more shopping. Yes. That was and excellent. The, the, the best part was when it was all done is it all communicated together too. Yes. That's what fell into place perfectly. You know, what do you think didn't go well? Well, that little piece of metal at the back panel was a little bit of a challenge at the beginning. We, oh. we didn't realize when we did our pre-investigation that the metal panel in the back was that thin. Yeah, it was so thin that screws would not uh, hold. So where we were going to mount the BMK in the shunt, uh, we had to support it a little better. So. And yes, that was a great <laughs> idea that you did. Yeah, what was that? Two plastic uh, yeah. blocks for uh, jacks? Yeah, you know, those little jack blocks, those little yellow ones with the handles. Well, we just use those. Those are perfect uh, support mechanisms for the back and for the front. So that worked out real well. I like that because, uh, you know, it's like ingenuity using what you yeah, had. And I think that we if we would have had hand crimpers, our job oh. would have been a lot easier. Well, it was a little different in mine because mine, I did all the cables on the ground before I put them in. This one... The cables were already there. You had inverters. So the inverter cable to the batteries, we had to cut in the middle. So and hand crimpers would have been nice instead of crawling in there. And that space, as you can see back there, <laughs> hopefully you can see that, is very small. And we had to get our big bodies in there <laughs> and ham use the hammer crimp. Inside. Inside. And so we yeah. hooked everything back up. Yeah. And uh, everything is communicating and... Everything's working great. And now you get to see what? The state of charge. Oh, darn you. Yeah. Finally, you know what you got. Yeah. So what have you been doing since you got the Battleborns? How have you been handling it in a boondocking situation? Well, we have been running the bat or the generator, excuse me, two hours in the morning and two hours at night. Guessing. Just guessing because <laughs> we didn't have a clue. All it said was volts. So, so how, many have you, how many times have you looked at the control panel since you got the BMK installed? Uh, maybe a couple times. <laughs> Just it's a couple. addicting. It it's is addicting really like because you And I think it, most people need to understand that we did two. Not everybody's going to start with two inverters and two BMKs and two control panels. And that was something that extended the time a little bit more. Most people are doing one leg at a time. Yours already had everything on two legs on the right. 30 amp side. So we had the 2000 and the 2800. So we had to actually install twice. Yep. That's what most normal travel trailers or, you know, any of the little smaller coaches would do. And then you added the switches. Like, well, we just, when we did the initial investigation, we realized there was no cutoff switches for the batteries. Now, I'm not telling you that that's a smart thing or a bad thing, but I've never seen a coach that didn't have that. And now that we've done it, I love it. It's the best thing ever. And he got the good ones. It's the keyed yes. selector switches. That's pretty awesome. It's a marine grade. Super awesome. Yes. So I do want to say that, uh, thank God you were here to help. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciate that. And uh, fun. we are going to be paying real close attention of our electrical usage and how many times we have to run the generator. And we are going to be specking out with Chris and with another good friend of ours, Lance, uh, about the solar system we're going to put on top. Well, we are going to in install the uh, solar, but uh, stay tuned for that. 
And once again, thanks, Chris, for Absolutely. helping me out here. It's been great. And uh, one thing I do want everybody to do is go find your adventure. <laughs>